Okay, this is going to be a real quick video going over the rules of significant figures. So significant figures are really a representation of how well we know a measurement. And when we are given a measurement or when we do mathematical manipulation on physical quantities, we need to make sure that we're representing that measurement in an appropriate level of precision and accuracy. And our significant digits give us that information. Now, how we get the number of significant digits for a given physical measurement is entirely dependent on the measuring device and its level of precision and accuracy that it is able to provide. We're not going to worry about that in this little mini lecture. We're just going to talk about if I'm given a number, how do I know how many significant digits there are? And how do I know if I'm going to manipulate those numbers, how many significant digits I can give in my answer? So we're going to talk about a few rules so we know how many significant digits they are, and then we'll talk about the math part. We're going to look at two big rules, and one rule number two is subdivided into a lot. And the first is when we're dealing with integer values. So integer values are always significant. So if I have a number, let's say 731, I have three integer values in the number, I have three significant digits or significant figures, all right? If I have a value of 1,265, four integer values, four significant digits. So regardless of what the number is, integer values are always significant. We count those. What about zeros? That's where we're going to start looking at some cases. So zeros are a little bit different. So we're going to look at the zero rules. Rule number one for zeros. If zeros are in front of the number, in front of the measurement value, okay, that's what we're dealing with in our numbers, right? These are actually measurement values. If a zero is in front, it is not significant. Okay, so if I have 731 and I plop a whole bunch of zeros here, I could plop a thousand zeros in front of that number and it doesn't change the number. So those zeros can't mean anything, right? They're not significant. Or if I have a number 0 0.00261, I could plop a whole bunch more zeros in front of this number. And again, doesn't change anything. Zeros in front of a number, whether there's a decimal point or not, are not significant. So 0 0.00261, three significant digits, the two, the six, and the one. All right, that's the easy zero rule. The second kind of easy zero rule, let me get this, these extra zeros out of here. All right, is if zero is in between integer values. So if we have zeros in between, they are significant. All right, what do I mean by that? Well, if my number is 1,026, I have three integer values and then I have that zero sandwiched in between. It is significant. So one, two, three, four. This has four significant digits. If I have 112,002, I have zeros sandwiched in between integers. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six significant digits. So if zeros are in between, they are significant. All right. And the final rule, which has sub rules. And that's what happens if the zero is at the end. A 
couple of things, a couple of different things. So let's give an example of what that number is, that few of numbers. So let's say we have 7,610. I have 0 0.130 and I have 120 point. All right, these are the three scenarios I want to talk about. <coughs> When a zero is at the end of a number, and that number is, does not have any decimal points after it, this zero is not significant. So at the end, with no decimal place, It is not significant. So in this example, I have one, two, three significant digits. Another example, let's say I had 120,000 as my number. I have one, two significant digits. The rest of these zeros follow the number and there is no decimal place involved. All right? If there is a decimal place involved, 0 0.130, these zeros at the end after the decimal point, at the end after the decimal point, are significant. when after decimal. When they're at the end and after a decimal, 0 0.130. Three significant digits. My two integer values and my zero at the end. And as another example, if I have 0 0.001310, how many significant digits there are? Now I have a number of zeros in here. I have three zeros, there's a decimal place, but these three zeros are in front of the number. Not significant. Then I have, I'm after the decimal, and I have one, two, three integers and a zero at the end. That is at the end, and it's after a decimal, it's significant. So this number has one, two, three, four significant digits. All right, and now there's one more rule. And that is this one. So what does this look like? It doesn't look like a whole lot different than 7610. There's a zero at the end, there's no decimal, it's not after a decimal, and there's a zero at the end. But I have placed a decimal after the zero. I didn't add another zero, but I placed a decimal there. That decimal placement tells me that the zero preceding it is significant. It's our indication that's saying that zero actually does mean something. It is significant. So, it's sort of like when after a decimal, but when a decimal is placed after it, then it is significant. So, if I want to turn 7,610, and this zero actually is important, all I do is place a little decimal there. And that tells the observer, the consumer, the scientist, the community, that that zero is important. It does mean something. This turns it from three to four significant digits. With no decimal there, that zero is not important. It is 120, but that zero is not significant. And I end up with two significant digits. So the zero rules can be a little, little cumbersome, but you basically want to keep in mind that any number of zeros in front, not significant. 
If they're in between their significant, that seems, these two seem a little logical. And then when they're at the end, if I'm dealing with a number with a decimal point, anything at the end is significant. If I'm dealing with a whole number and there's no decimal point, those zeros are not significant. If I'm dealing with a whole number and there is a decimal point presented, those zeros are significant. All right, so those are the rules. Now what do we do with the math? So it's important to recognize that math does not change significance. And what do I mean by that? Oftentimes in physics, we take physical measurements and we do something with them. We describe an object's speed based on its distance and its time it took. We describe a force based on the acceleration that the object experienced. So we use different numbers to describe other numbers, and we do math to do that. So let's take an example, an example of the kind of math we do in physics with speed and look at how that affects significance. So speed in physics is equal to the distance an object moved in the time the object moved that distance. All right, you can check out the speed video if you're interested in more. Let's say that the object moved 731 meters in 6.2 seconds. That's a very fast moving object, right? 731 meters in 6.2 seconds. Now, if I'm going to determine the speed of that object, I would simply take the speed is equal to 731 divided by 6.2. And when I put that into my calculator, I get a number 117.9032258. How many times have we done math and the calculator gives us all these digits? Well, yeah, because the math is that number. But does that mean something physically? Do I really know that the speed of this object is 117.9032258? That level of information? Of course not. Why do I know that I don't know that well? Well, because I only had these two numbers to work with. The measuring device that gave me the distance had how many significant digits? Three. Three integers. So this device only had three significant digits. The device that gave me time, two significant digits. So there's no way I can know my speed to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten significant digits. It's not possible. So what answer do I give? Well, it's based on the measurements. You cannot know the level of significance of a answer beyond the level of significance of the measuring device that got you to calculate that answer. And you're limited by the one with the least amount of significance. So in our example, 731, my linear measuring device, my length measuring device had three levels of significance. My time measuring device only had two levels of significance. So this is my constraint. I can only know my information to two levels of significance. So I have to take my answer and I have to round it to two levels of significance. So 117 rounded to only two digits that are significant gives us 120 meters per second. Now, am I consistent with my rules? Is this only two? Well, I have two integers. They are significant. And then I have that zero. The zero is at the end, and there is no decimal place. So it is not significant. So I have two sig figs, and I am consistent with an appropriate representation of my measuring devices. All right, so math can't give you more. Math can't give you more significance. You need to look at the numbers you are using to determine the significance of your answer. You need to look at the numbers that you're using. You can't be more than your lowest number. All right. Good job.